I woke up this morning to an Imagine Dragons song playing from Alexa, my personal electronic assistant. I've programmed her to play this same song to wake us up every day at the same time. About 10 minutes later, all the lights in the house came on, and she told us what the weather was going to be like today. As my three kids and I started getting ready for school, she told my oldest that today was trash day. And then she gave us a one-minute warning that it was time to load up the van. On our way out the door, I said, Alexa, turn off the lights, and the whole house went dark. This is about how every morning goes in my house, thanks to this little black sphere sitting on my kitchen counter. You know, I was thinking the other day, who thought of this? Like, who dreamed up this robot assistant that can help us around the house? Was it someone trying to invent something to help their grandpa remember things? Was it someone trying to create something to make life easier for a friend in a wheelchair? Or was it someone like me who just has trouble getting up on time in the morning? Either way, this is someone who looked around and said, there has to be a better way. And they found one. You know, six to 10 years before Alexa was invented, they couldn't have dreamed that there would be a job working on these little devices. But because he or she asked that one question, that dream job became a reality. You know, I spend a lot of time thinking about the people behind our most innovative products because my job is to hire people. Over the past 15 years, my team, we're called Human Resources, we've hired at least 10,000 humans to do all kinds of jobs. We've hired dog groomers, accountants, IT developers, and surgeons. And a new job is created when there's a new problem that needs to be solved. So the company calls me and says, here's our problem, and I go out and find the perfect person to solve it. Whether I'm hiring a dog groomer or a brain surgeon, I'm trying to find someone who's going to get in there and say there has to be a better way and is going to get to work and find it. So here we are. You're halfway through your sixth grade year. And we're going to start talking soon about what you want to do for your job for the rest of your life. You're going to hear a lot of talk about it. The fact is, the world that you live in, the world that you learn in, and that you're going to work in is changing faster than any other time in human history. Most of you in this room are going to end up working in a job that hasn't been invented yet, using technology and products that we haven't even thought of, that don't even exist. And somehow, you've got to prepare for it now, right? So I'm here talking to you today because middle school is when something changes and a shift takes place. So up until this point, you probably haven't had a whole lot of say in what's happened in your lives, choosing what school you go to, what you wear, who you hang out with, even what you do in your free time. But that's about to change if you haven't noticed it's already happening. Sixth grade, you in middle school, you start to get a lot more freedom to choose your classes, your electives, your hobbies, who you hang out with, and what you're going to do in your free time. And for some of you, that sounds awesome. But for some of you, that might be overwhelming, all these new decisions, maybe even paralyzing. So I want to talk to you today about a method that I want you to use to take each of these decisions and be thoughtful and purposeful when you decide. You're going to get a lot of advice around your career and what job you want to grow into. And a lot of people are going to tell you to start with something you're good at. Maybe you've heard this. Start with something you're really good at, and then let's make a job or a career out of it. But I'm going to challenge that today. And I'm going to give you advice that's almost the opposite. I want you to spend your time focusing on figuring out who you are and how you're wired, what makes you tick. And then I want you to be open to wherever that might take you. Instead of waiting for your dream job to appear, I want you to figure out who you are and where you fit in the world. And then you want you to show up and create it. One of the best ways to figure out where that is and where you belong is to get to know your individual strengths. My favorite definition of a strength comes from Marcus Buckingham. He's a business leader and an author. He describes it like this. A strength is an activity that before you're doing it, you look forward to it. While you're doing it, time moves by quickly and you can concentrate. And after you've done it, it seems to fulfill a need of yours. Notice one thing you don't hear is that it's something that you're good at. 
Nowhere in the definition of strength does it say something you're good at. So take note, because that's important. So let's break this down. The first part he says is a strength is an activity that when you're not doing it, you're, look forward, you're looking forward to doing it. So I want you to think about the things that you look forward to most. For example, what is your favorite class? What is it about it that you look forward to? Is it the subject itself? Is it the way the material is presented to you? Is it that you're working with numbers or that you get to be creative? And let's think about outside of the classroom. What do you look forward to most? Maybe you have a hobby. Maybe you play soccer. Ask yourself questions. What is it that draws me in? Is it the thrill of scoring a goal? Or maybe it's the sense of belonging, of being a part of a team. Maybe you're just learning that you like to get up early on Saturdays and exercise. No? So what I want you to do is as you try new hobbies and try new things, I want you to ask these questions and follow this pattern of paying attention to how you feel, paying attention to how you react. Because what you're learning about yourself is your own specific likes and dislikes, separate from your parents, separate from cultural expectations, separate from your friends. Your unique identity is starting to take shape. The second part of the definition of a strength is while you're doing it, time goes by quickly and you can concentrate. So I want you to think about, it still doesn't say anything about being good at it, right? You know what it doesn't also say? It doesn't say a strength has to be something you enjoy. You can learn a lot about yourself with how you feel and doing things you don't like to do. For example, we all have chores, right? But does time go by more quickly when you're mowing the lawn? Or maybe you like to make perfect lines in the carpet when you vacuum, or you found your own special way to fold towels. You're laughing. Even the most mundane, boring tasks can teach you a lot about yourself and kind of give you insight into the type of work tasks that you're going to enjoy. And a lot of you, when you think of things you lose track of time doing or you can concentrate, a lot of you are going to think about things you do online. This is an age where you're going to be giving more and more access to the internet. You're going to be earning a lot more screen time. Don't waste it. Use it wisely. When you find a hobby or something online that you find yourself losing yourself into, I want you to dig deeper and I want you to learn more about it because this is your chance at this age to become good at it. Let me give you some examples. If you love to watch videos about slime, think about the chemistry behind that. There's chemical reactions that have to take place for slime to be created. If you like listening to ASMR, think about the brain. There's sound waves. There's acoustics involved. What is it that makes that work for some people? Dude Perfect has a lot to teach you about geometry and physics when they're planning out their next trick shot. Look beyond makeup tutorials to see what you can learn about color theory and about different types of skin. So all of a sudden, this seems a little harder, right? So just because it's your strength doesn't mean it's going to come easily to you. It just means that if it's something you enjoy, you're more likely to stick with it long enough to become good at it. That's why you want to identify these strengths. The last part of the definition of a strength, Buckingham says, is an activity that after you've done it, it seems to fulfill a need of yours. So you may not have spent much time up until this age thinking about your needs, but they're important and they matter. So I want you to think about the last time you felt really proud of yourself. Or you felt a sense of accomplishment, whether anyone was around to see it or not. Was it when you set a personal record at a sporting event? Were you creating something from scratch? Did you finally get a good grade in one of your hardest classes? Or maybe you feel most fulfilled when you're serving others. Take note of how you're feeling in those moments. One of the most important things that you're going to have control over is to choose who you surround yourself with. And I want you to choose your friends wisely. Okay? Figure out who likes you for you and which friends energize you. Or maybe you're going to find that you do your best, most fulfilling work when you're by yourself and you get more energized away from the crowd. 
And that's an important discovery, and you should appreciate that about yourself. People who don't take time to learn about their strengths and to lean into how they were wired can end up in a job that they don't look forward to. The time moves slowly, and they struggle to concentrate. And that can be quite unfulfilling, and I don't want that for you. I'm going to give you an example of some people who found their strengths and worked within it to make a difference. One of the most famous inventors of all time is Thomas Edison. And around age 12, around your age, he discovered that he loved working in his basement, tinkering with electricity and chemistry. And he spent hours down there in this homemade lab working by candlelight. And he said, there has to be a better way. Did you know that he spent hours and hours, it took him 3,000 designs before he finally invented the light bulb. That means he failed 2,999 times, right? Doesn't sound like he was very good at it, does it? But because he was working in his strength, he looked forward to it, time moved quickly, he could concentrate, and he created something that changed the world. Let me give you another example, someone a little closer to your age. 10 years old, Cassidy Goldstein. She spent most of her time coloring and creating art. While she was doing that, her crayons kept breaking. They kept getting to be too short to be used. She said, there has to be a better way. And she invented a simple invention called the crayon holder. This was 15 years ago, and that's still being sold today. Anna Humphrey. She was driven by this belief that everyone should have access to clean water. She dug deeper. She learned about pollution. She learned about water filtration. And she thought, there has to be a better way. In high school, she invented an app that det detects E. coli in drinking water. This invention is saving lives today, and she won all these inventor awards. You know, most of us are not going to grow up to be inventors. But what I'm here to tell you is that there's room for invention and innovation in all jobs across all walks of life. You may end up just doing a job that's been around forever, but finding a new way to do it. What I want you to do is take advantage of this unique window of time, middle school and high school, where you have the flexibility to try all kinds of things, to figure out how you're wired and how you're uniquely sewn together and find your place in this world. And when you do, all you have to do is show up and look around because there are problems to be solved everywhere. And all you'll have to do is say, there has to be a better way. And you'll find it. And when you do, you will have created a dream job that didn't exist. And I can't wait to hire you for it. You may have discovered a service that the world doesn't even know we need. And I can't wait to use it. And maybe, just maybe, one of you will create an Alexa that can fold clothes and put them away. And I can't wait to buy it. So I'm counting on you. Good luck.